soil pollution. Our environment is composed of atmosphere, earth and water. Earth, the planet we live in, is made up of four different parts that are called spheres, lithosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere. Between them, they contain all the stuff on our planet, from fish in the ocean to the air we breathe. What exactly are the spheres and what's in them? Lithosphere. Litho in Greek is known for rock. This basically means having to do with the earth. Lithosphere is like a skeleton of a planet and other spheres are built on top of it. Lithosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere. Lithosphere is made up of all the rocks and minerals on Earth, from the biggest boulders to the tiniest grains of sand, from volcanoes and canyons to beaches and mountains, you name it. If it is made up of solid Earth, it is part of lithosphere. In other words, lithosphere is made up of only non-living stuff. Living things do need to eat though. And all living things are part of another one of Earth's spheres, the biosphere. Bio is the Greek word for life. I'm sure you must have heard of biology. Biology is the study of life. Biosphere is made up of many different biomes. What are biomes? Biomes are regions that have similar kind of plants, animals and other living things. Deserts and forests are types of biomes. So are rainforests, greenlands and wetlands. Biosphere has all of the living organisms on earth, the grass, the birds, etc. Unlike the lithosphere, Everything in the biosphere is alive, from birds and animals to water. Hydrosphere. Hydro is the Greek word for water. Hydrosphere contains all the water on the earth. That is, all the salt water in the ocean, fresh water in the lakes and rivers, water trapped in glaciers as ice, and the water held deep underground. Do you know the air around us also contains water? We see it in the form of rains and snow. These come from clouds which happen to be way up in the atmosphere. Atmosphere. Atmos is the Greek word for air. Atmosphere contains all of the gases on planet Earth. Although we can't really see the atmosphere or touch it, it reaches everywhere and covers the entire plants like a giant quilt. This atmosphere blanket is split up in many different layers. Troposphere. It contains 80% of air in the planet. Stratosphere. No weather up there and much less air, but has an important gas in it that helps absorb harmful rays from the sun. Mesosphere is the coldest layer of the atmosphere. Thermosphere. Even less air is found here. Satellites can be seen here. 
exosphere. This is the highest one can go up to and still be on Earth. And after this is space. The interaction of the atmosphere, lithosphere, hydrosphere and biosphere is continuing for years together. Hitherto, the environment was clean and green. Over the years, due to various human activities like massive industrialization, construction, transportation and agriculture, the composition of environment became imbalanced. Although these are needed for human development, each activity tends to emit certain unwanted materials into the environment, causing imbalances in the atmosphere. This adversely affects human life. Now let's study about land pollution. To understand what land pollution is, we must first learn about soil. We get everything for our living from soil, don't we? What is soil? Soil is one of the three major natural resources alongside air and water. Soil is that part of nature without which there is no life. Trees and plants grow here. Soil is made up of minerals and decomposed organic matter. Soil creates a habitat for fungi, bacteria and related organisms which in turn feed and support plant life. Healthy soil is essential for the growth of quality plants that in turn yield bountiful harvest. How is soil formed? Soil formation is a long process. It takes 100 to 10,000 years to create one inch of topsoil. Many factors such as climate, topography, living organism and types of parent material contribute in its formation. What are parent materials? Parent materials are breakdown of underlying rocks or from deposits by streams and rivers, seas, hills, wind and glaciers or organic plant residues. Over time, these materials are weathered by the effects of freezing, thawing, wetting, drying, heating, cooling, erosion, plants, animals and from chemical reactions. Parent materials are divided into three horizontal layers. The top layer consists of mostly organic matter and biological activity. The middle layer is the zone of maximum material accumulation and the bottom layer is mainly the parent material. The top soil is important since it is the foundation for the life on the earth. Do you know, in one acre of land where the top soil is eight inches thick, there exists nearly five and a half tons of bacteria and 50,000 earthworms. Soil properties. The quality of crop directly depends on the quality of the agricultural soil in which it is grown. If the quality of soil is good, the crop produced on it is of high quality. 
what is high quality soil? To know this, let us first understand the fundamental properties of soil. These can be divided into three major categories physical, chemical and biological properties. Physical properties of soil. Soil comprises of minerals, organic matter, water and air. The composition and proportion of these components greatly influences physical properties of soil including color, texture, structure and porosity. These properties regulate and affect air and water movement in the soil that enables soil ability to function. Organic matter is the organic component of soil, which includes the residues of dead plants, animals and organisms. It consists of nutrients necessary for plant growth such as nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Soils, which contain 30% or more organic matter, are considered organic soils. All other soils are identified as mineral soils. Organic matter in soil improves water infiltration, decreases evaporation and increases the water holding capacity. Where there is organic matter, numerous organisms help to convert it back to nutrients these organisms help to create ground, ideal for cultivation, thus balancing a natural state of soil. Chemical Properties of Soil The term pH is used to indicate the level of acidity or alkalinity of a soil. Now, let's determine the pH values of good soil. The range of pH values of good soil lies between 5.5 to 7.5. Below pH 7, the soils are termed as acidic and above pH 7, alkaline. The pH of soil is important in determining the type of vegetation that can grow in the soil and the type of organisms that live there. The presence of organic matter in soil has a close relationship with soil pH. Soil richer in organic matter is acidic in nature. This is due to degradation of various substances that produce various acids in soil. Availability of plant nutrients is strongly tied to the pH in soil. The availability of nitrogen, potassium, calcium, magnesium and sulfur tends to decrease with decreasing pH since conditions which acidify the soil such as weathering and plant uptake also result in removal of these nutrients or in decreased microbial activity. Biological Properties of Soil Soil is not a dead mass but an abode of millions of organisms. It is the most abundant and diverse ecosystem on the earth. Soil organisms include both plant and animal forms ranging from submicroscopic viruses to earthworms to burrowing animals such as gophers and ground squirrels. Major microbial groups in soil are bacteria, fungi, algae and protozoa. 
These feed on plant residues, burrow the soil and help in aeration and percolation of water. Soil microbes also have influence in controlling the quantities and forms of various chemical elements found in soil. Most notable are the cycles of carbon, nitrogen, sulphur and phosphorus, all of which are elements important in soil fertility. Soil microbes convert organic forms of elements to their inorganic forms and liberate carbon dioxide, ammonia, sulphate, phosphate and inorganic forms of other elements. This process is known as mineralization. This is the basis of nutrient cycles in all the major ecosystems of the world. Besides their role in controlling the rate of production of inorganic forms from various organic forms, soil microbes, particularly soil bacteria, also control the forms of ions in which these nutrients occur. Thus, we can conclude that physical, chemical and biological properties of soils affect many processes in the soil that make it suitable for cultivation and other purposes.